Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Quarters studio. Welcome to the show. So, over the past few days, I've woken up to some really exciting Commander Legends spoilers, and this morning was absolutely no different. We've got a really exciting new Golgari Commander with a character that many have been thinking should have a card, or at least a card for her specifically, for quite a long time. So, let's jump into it. So, Belby Corrupted Observer is a 2-2 zombie elf that costs black-green. She has the beginning of each player's post-combat main phase. That player adds colorless colors for each of your opponents who lost life this turn. Damage causes loss of life. So, this card can be absolutely insane for you. But it's one that you really got to be careful with as well because it does, it can help your opponents out too. Uh, so basically, kind of let, let's just kind of go through a scenario, you know. Let's say, you know, you get Belby out on turn two and you've got some way to make everyone lose one life at least on turn three. You're going to be generating nine mana on turn three. Assuming you hit your land drops, you know, you have three lands in play. You, you know, get everyone to lose one life on turn three. And post combat, you get you know three you know three triggers from this. Essentially, you get two colorless per each one of your opponents. That's six more mana. That's nine mana total on turn three, which is absolutely insane. Now, the downside of this card is that this can help your opponents out as well. Now, the the kind of benefit is that you know if they attack you and hit you or make you lose life, that doesn't benefit them from this card. It doesn't. But if they hurt themselves, if they you know have something you know like a, a fetch land or a a shock land. That is going to actually trigger this, and they are going to get colorless colors, so keep that in mind. That basically, your opponent's cracking a fetch land is now going to generate them mana because of this. So, keep that in mind. Again, it doesn't make the card unplayable or anything like that. And again, in some scenarios, having 9 mana on turn 3 is absolutely absurd. But yeah, uh, and really quick, I just want to mention kind of the, the lore behind Belby. Uh, if you, you might be familiar with the card Belby's Portal, uh, basically kind of in magic lore, uh, Bel uh, Belby, I believe, is Eladomri's daughter, which kind of is an interesting callback to uh, Eladomri's Vineyard, which is a card that says the beginning of each player's main phase add green green to that player's mana pool. So this is also a card that kind of benefits all players, gives them mana. Belby does it in a different way, obviously, kind of a conditional way that, you know, basically making your opponents lose life. So this card can be an incentive for your opponents to maybe swing their attacks elsewhere or kind of direct, you know, life loss or damage spells elsewhere because, you know, they get a benefit whenever they, you know, uh, hurt other players. But again, this can also kind of put them way ahead on mana as well. So you need to be careful with this too. But let's just kind of talk about that kind of initial scenario. You know, how do you get that kind of nine mana on turn three? Cards like Vicious Conquistador, Night Market Lookout, or Mardu Shadow Spear. There's quite a few of these actually that basically when they attack, each opponent loses one life. Uh, it is going to kind of be the most efficient way to kind of get to that, you know, nine mana on turn three, which again is absolutely absurd. Uh, you know, one thing that you can do with that, you know, obviously one direction that you can take this, it's, most of it's going to be colorless mana, but you could go an Eldrazi kind of deck, you know, basically, you know, just using all that colorless mana to get out, you know, an Artisan of Kozilek on turn three. Again, that's kind of magic Christmas land stuff, but, you know, getting a 10-9 with Annihilator 2, you probably don't get that, you know, ETB trigger to get a creature back, you know, from your graveyard because it's turn 3, and you probably don't have any creatures in your graveyard at that point, but maybe. Anyways, though, you know, Annihilator 2 on turn 3 is a pretty deadly thing. You're probably going to be able to win the game from there, one would hope. Uh, if you've got a higher budget, obviously you can use some of the, you know, uh, more expensive Eldrazi, like a Void Winnerer. Again, a Void Winnerer on turn 3 is absolutely absurd and very scary. Your opponents can't cast spells with even converted mana cost. Your opponents can't block with creatures with even converted mana cost. Yeah, you're going to be able to just kind of shut things down right away with this if you can get that out that early. Pretty crazy. Again, there's plenty of Eldrazi to pick from. There's plenty of high converted mana cost spells to pick from. And again, there's a lot of other effects that actually kind of damage your opponents or make your opponents lose life, all of your opponents, or even every player. Like a Pestilence, costs two black black, says at the end of turn, if no creatures are in play, sacrifice Pestilence, and pay a black, Pestilence deals one damage to each creature and each player. So this is kind of a way to just kind of ensure every single turn just for a black mana that you're generating that six colorless mana. So, you know, you're basically netting five mana because this is in play and by activating it. 
Again, you have to have you, know, you have got to make sure that creatures are still in play. You're not going to wipe the board completely, or this goes away. But yeah, this is uh, is a nice combination with that. There are other cards as well, like a Sanctum of Stone Fangs that can work as well. Since the beginning of your post -co or pre combat main phase, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the number of shrines you control. So yeah, this basically just says, okay, I have one shrine. Doesn't really matter, you know. It, it's just one loss of life for each of your opponents. That's all you need to kind of get that, you know, six free mana essentially. So. Uh, and even something like a, as simple as a Cryptolith Fragment can help as well. It's a mana rock. It comes into play tapped, so it's not the most efficient. It only taps for one, but it does make each player lose one life. So again, you are, you know, netting essentially with this, you know, and your other things. That's so going to be seven mana between this and then the, the trigger from Belby. So yeah, you're going to be, be at a point where you can generate a lot of mana very quickly with this kind of a deck. Now, some places to put that mana are, you know, one that comes to mind is Animus Awakening. So you can get even more mana to next spell. Reel the top X cards of your library, put all land cards among them onto the battlefield, tapped in the rest and bottom of your library in a random order. And if you've got Cell Mastery, those lands on tap. So basically, yeah, you can just say, okay, with all this mana that I'm generating, I'm going to get even further ahead. Again, if you cast this on turn three, you've got eight, eight mana into that X cost. And let's say you hit four lands, you're going to be way ahead of your opponents at that point, you know, putting you at, you know, I don't even know, 11, 12, 13 mana on the next turn. So by turn four. So yeah, you're going to be in a good position. Again, Magic Christmas land, but. It's not too far off from what can happen with this kind of a deck and how kind of quickly things can get out of control. Everflowing Chalice is another one. Again, this is a multi-kicker artifact that basically, you know, for every two mana that you put in, it gets a charge counter on it, and then it taps for the number of charge counters on it. So basically the kind of perfectly efficient mana rock that taps for half the amount of mana that you put into it. I'm always an advocate for those kind of mana rocks. So yeah, basically just saying, okay... I don't really have any kind of big spells that I want to use right now, but let me just invest more mana into this so I can use it later for those kind of big spells. Uh, obviously, one that can really help you out is something like an Ingaric's Wake. Again, that does cost nine mana. You probably don't want to ca cast that on turn three, as the board probably doesn't have kind of enough stuff to blow up yet. But it does say destroy all creatures you don't control, or don't control, and all planeswalkers you don't control. So this can be a fantastic way to just wipe the board of all the problems that you have and just kind of you know just keep doing what you're gonna do. Uh, and, and other X spells that you, you want to consider, you know, uh, you can use a multitude of finishers, you know, in, in Golgari that have an X cost, essentially. A Court of Calling can be a great one. X green, green, green. Has Convoke, so you can also use your creatures to help as well if you want to. Search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost, X or less, and put onto the battlefield and check your library. So again, if you are playing that Eldrazi-style deck, this can go find you, you know, the most oppressive Eldrazi that you want, and the one that can finish your opponents off very quickly with this kind of a deck again there's a lot of x spells to choose from obviously exsanguinate something like that or torment of hellfire comes to mind each opponent loses x life you gain life equal to the life loss this way it's gonna be a fantastic way to take opponents out to really pad your life total and to put you ahead uh or, or if you want to get kind of even riskier you can do the green version with like a hurricane it's gonna deal x damage to each creature with flying and each player so it hits you as well but again if you're quick enough if you've got other ways to gain life or if you know you've just been very efficient at kind of kind of taking your opponents down, this can be a way to finish players off too. If you want to be a little more risky than maybe an Exsanguinate or a Tor Torment of Hellfire, which are a little more expensive, I, I think Torment might be around ten right now, and Exsanguinate maybe around five or, or three or something like that. Anyway, it's not exactly budget friendly for this channel, but Hurricane is one that if you want to be a little more risky, it, it could be a fun one to do. And again, just want to mention one more time. Keep in mind that this commander does kind of benefit your opponents as well, especially if they are playing a lot of fetch lands or shock lands. Yeah, they're going to be able to just kind of, uh, you know, benefit off of kind of making themselves lose life or ping themselves, essentially. So keep that in mind. They don't benefit from Belby when they hit you, so that can make them send, you know, their threats elsewhere or their life loss or damage spells elsewhere, but they are going to benefit when they hurt themselves. So... Keep that in mind. So yeah, your opponents very well could have access to just as much mana as you do because they're, you know, hitting their opponents and then also hitting themselves in a turn. That's going to generate them six mana as well. I'd say most of the time, you know, if they don't have a fetch land or a shock land, they're probably not going to have a way to make themselves lose life. So, they, they, I mean, it, they are kind of capped usually at, you know, maybe four extra mana, but still four extra mana in a turn is a lot. So keep that in mind. Belby is a really interesting commander. I really like the design of this. You can take it in multiple directions. I mean, you pr you probably could do a, a political build, maybe. Maybe you can do some, you know, some fog effects to protect players, you know, when you need to or whatnot. But yeah, you could just kind of go in a, you know, Eldrazi tribal, you know, get things out quickly and then just, yeah, smack your opponents and annihilate their board. So there's a lot of different directions you can take this commander. I'm really happy to see Belby get a card. Finally, I mean, Belby's portal, but an actual card for Belby. So yeah, I think this is a really cool card. I'd love to hear from you, though. So let me know in the comments below what your thoughts on Belby are. And as always, thanks again and have a good one.